and uh, welcome to this week's episode of The Good Gram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Uh, okay, uh, as per usual, a big thank you to everybody that uh, watched last week's episode of the show, liked, uh, commented, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's always fun to do something other than whiskey. Uh, I mean, as much as I love whiskey, it's always nice to um, uh, look at uh, a different type of spirit. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was fun to do a, a rum episode. But as you can see today, we're, we're back at whiskey time and... Um, we're looking at uh, some of the latest releases from uh, from James Eady. Now, a number of you know that uh, that I was planning to do this uh, this week's episode of the show on the James Eady releases because obviously I've emailed you out the the offer on them. And um, yep, this is all part of the the sales pitch, shall we say? Um, and. Um, uh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to those customers that have already given me orders uh, based on my brief snippet of a tasting note that uh, that I, I uh, uh, wrote for each of the, the bottles and um, uh, hopefully after this week's episode of the show you'll uh, you'll be um, going, yeah, yeah, definitely, I'm, I'm definitely going to have that bottle or uh, what have you. So anyway, uh, this month's uh, James Eady selection, I think, uh, I think it was nine and so obviously, you know, <laughs> not able to do nine in an episode, I think would be, you know, it'd be far too long. So I selected six, which I think are quite, uh, um, you know, a good selection of the range. And, you know, we've been working with James Eady now for um, a couple of years, I think it is now. And I, I like what they're doing. Um, I mean... I like the, the, the balance of their range, so obviously you have the small batch, which gen generally tend to be two or three casks, sub 10 year old, go on the shelf at a nice price, um, and you know, by and large I think you know, the, the quality in those has been pretty good. Then you have the single cask bottlings, again, I'll say there's been some variables, uh, it has to be said, you know, some good, um, some you know, not quite... Uh, quite up to to my rather fussy standards i suppose um and uh, and then you have obviously the single cast wood finishes which um interesting you know there's a lot of you guys that sort of you know love the wood finishes um some of them i've i've enjoyed i thought they've been really very good some i've thought were a little bit too too heavy on the uh, on, on the finishing cask um and again i think the prices are quite fair most of the, the their bottlings do tend to be on the younger side but i don't think i've really i don't think i've had any issues with with, with any of them but the odd one or two which i thought were maybe a little too young um but as we know you know um if you if you want to keep the price down then you're going to have to bottle youngish spirit anything you know approaching sort of like your mid-teens and you, you you're in almost pretty much into the realm of what 70 70 to 100 quid retail price and um well we can't all afford that kind of uh, of spend so it's always a case of you know looking in, in my my opinion, looking for value for money, and certainly looking at the small batch range um, is is sort of you know key to key to that. So anyway, um, as we've got quite a few to get through, different uh, bottlings and uh, so on and so forth, I'm just going to introduce them. Okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, a couple of uh, the new bottlings in the small batch range. This is a nine-year-old Glen Elgin. It's two refill bourbon hoggies and a first fill bourbon hoggy. It was distilled in 2010, uh, bottled in September of this year, as were all of these uh, samples. Three casks, uh, like I said, um, 801358, 801359, and 806436. Now, I like Glen Elgin. Glen Elgin's a fun mole, I think, um, and um, yeah, you don't. Uh, well, obviously, the owners Diageo don't do anything with it at all. It's it's predominantly used for um, white horse, I think, uh, off the top of my head. Um, and so, yeah, it's nice to see it um, in the independent bottlings. Uh, okay, and the second one we'll be looking at is a ten-year-old Linkwood. This is three recharred hoggies now. 
Um, well, I assume Richard Bourbon, possibly. Um, I don't know. There could be Richard wine casks. It's got a sort of a winey kind of colour to it. Um, so uh, this was distilled in uh, 2009, bottled again September. Three casks, like I said, 314374, 314377, and 314381, to be precise. Uh, third bottling we'll be looking at is uh, one of the two releases in the single cask range. This is a uh, bleh, Blair Athol. How old is it? Um, um, ten years old. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's a ten-year-old Blair Athol. It was distilled in November of 2009, bottled in September of this year. Uh, cask number 307362. Two, a Richard Hoggy, um, now that certainly looks like a Bourbon Richard Hoggy to me, and um, 317 bottles. Then we're going to move on to, this is a Strathmill, this is in the cask finish range, uh, this is an 11 year old, um, it spent uh, 9 years and 5 months in refill Bourbon Hoggy and 19 months finishing in First Fill Oloroso. And Look at the colour of that. Distillery character? I'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it's uh, cast, as I said, cast number, I don't know actually, I haven't got, it. I haven't got a note, oh yes I have, uh, 348030, can't read now, can't read, can't talk, um, at least I can taste whiskey, which is good. Um, and then we're going to move on to a couple of peated ones because it's always fun to finish with a bit of peat. So we're now back to the small batch bottlings. Uh, this is um, a Kalila, uh, eight-year-old Kalila. Uh, it is um, three casks, two eight-year-old uh, refill bourbon hoggies and one nine-year-old Richard uh, hoggy. Uh, cask numbers 321763, 321775 and 316478, 912 bottles um, and um, yeah interesting so lots of Richard Hoggies uh, seem to be cropping up in this month's uh, selection and the final bottling uh, is um, another uh, Palo Gattado finished Kalila I believe they did one was it last last time time before forget now uh, certainly I don't think this is I think this is the second Palo Gattado finished Kalila that they've done um, so, uh, it is an 11 year old, uh, it spent 10 years and 4 months in uh, refill Bourbon Hoggy and 8 months finishing in a refill Paolo Cotardo. So, short finishing, you know, re, re, uh, you know, reused cask, um, hopefully shouldn't, um, shouldn't be too swamped by the cask and it's always nice to see Paolo Cotardo uh, and, and other sherry other than um, Oloroso. Uh, I don't know whether the guys at James Eady have got any um, uh, Fino casks on the go at the moment. I, I probably should ask, because um, it'd be nice to see a Fino. Um, talking of which, um, I was tasting uh, as a, a, the new Tomatin bottling, um, which if I have the opportunity, I'll squeeze into a, a tasting at some stage. Uh, that was a um, uh, ex Fino finish uh, and really rather good. Um, so just giving you a bit of a heads up on that, you know. I mean, I'm in selling mode. <laughs> That's what what it's all about. Anyway, so um, anyway, yes. Uh, back to James Ed. So this is the this is today's uh, lineup. Let's kick off with um, uh, whatever I'm starting with. Oh, the Glen Elgin, yeah. <sighs> Right, okay, so uh, let's see what the Glen Elgin gives us. Uh, now, I'm a big, big fan of Glen Elgin. I love Glen Elgin, and this is a lovely Glen Elgin. It's young, it's fresh, it's crisp, um, it's slightly grassy, it's citric, but you can smell the weight that, you know, the, uh, the, and it's interesting. Uh, the, the distillery I find really fascinating as well. I mean, um, Short fermentation, uh, was it short? No, relatively long fermentation. Short, um, oh, for God's sake, no. Right, okay, so let's uh, see what uh, what the Glen Elgin gives us on the nose. That's a lovely nose. Um, I mean, it is 
it's kind of it's classically Glenelgin. Um, it's maybe not quite so honeyed as some bottlings, but then this is young Glenelgin, and I find that um, Glenelgin needs a little time to develop the honeyed notes. I mean, it's an interesting distillery in so far that um, they they go for a very a slow distillation um, and then use worm tubs as well, and you get quite a balanced spirit. Um, you get that lovely sort of citric. Um, fruitiness, you get the uh, a little bit of um, grassiness and then you get the weight from the worm tubs which eventually sort of comes in and it's not a sort of, you don't tend to find it's a sulfury new make, it's, it's a, quite a rich new make um, and unlike say something like say Dalwini for example uh, which uses worm tubs you know, or Mortlach for example it can tend to get away with being bottled at a young age because it's not too meaty and sulfury uh, to start off with um, but it has that lovely weight and I think this is I think it's a, an absolutely charming whiskey um, now I'm desperately trying to remember <laughs> what I'm selling it for because I haven't made a note of what I'm selling it for um, but I think it's around about 37.95 which oh, I'm more than happy with that anyway let's see what that's like Again, it shows the balance of the nose. It's got that lovely, crisp, grassy, fresh, citric, white fruit character. But there's a bit of weight to it as well. There's a little bit of crystallised fruit, um, some barley, a little nascent honey. Um, it's a little short, but you know, it's got again the citric notes kind of come back, and there's a little minerality as well, and it's it's palate cleansing finish it has to be said and I really like that I, again I think that is classic Glen Elgin uh, and I know that there's a, a lot of you probably are not particularly familiar with Glen Elgin and um, you know I would say get a bottle of that I mean that is you know young Glen Elgin to an absolute tea distillery character and that's <laughs> that's what I want from a whiskey you know I want the, the whiskey to tell me about the production I want the character of the spirit it's not a lot of oak I mean um, the although the, there's there is a first fill bourbon ca cask used there it's not giving it a huge amount of vanilla so you, it's allowing all of the spirit to sort of like you know to shine through so yeah lovely bottle Right, okay, so moving on to the liquid. Now, I know uh, a number of you were quite um, uh, interested in this particular bottling, um, so hopefully after you've watched the episode of the show, you'll still want to still want to buy it. Anyway, so and I think, uh, what am I selling it for? I think, again, this is, it's under 40 quid, I think, um, or is it about 40 quid? I forget now. I really should have done my homework, but anyway. Um, it's quite oaky. Um, but it's lithe, it's citric, it's um, quite fresh, there's some beeswax, there's some plum, raisins, some malt, red fruit. Um, yeah, there's, uh, like I said, quite a fair amount of oak, but again, really well balanced. Um, a bit of wood smoke, earth, and again, it has the linkwood weight, um, so it's not sort of it's it's standing up to these uh, the, the the recharged casks um, quite quite well in actual fact um, it, and it's it's a, it's a crowd pleasing nose I think um, it's certainly sort of one that you put your nose your nose into the glass and you go ooh that's rather nice um, yeah a little chocolatey now um, so what that's like. It's a little tannic to kick off with. It's got that winey dried fruits, almost sort of sherry notes. Um, licorice, dried fruit, malt. 
it's, it's, a, it's a lovely whiskey. It's got a good progression, so it kicks off with a lot of the tannins, a lot of the wood. You get some maltiness coming through on the mid palate. The wood kind of returns again on the finish. Smokier, toastier oak on the finish. Um, again, it's it's a it's a pleasant whiskey. It's obviously a little bit more oak than. Um, say the Glen Elgin, um, but it works really quite nicely, and 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 I think this is the the thing about whiskey is if you're going to start mucking around with with sherry casks, recharge hoggies, all that kind of stuff, pick the, the right whiskey to do it with, and you know I think whoever does the um, the, the cask selection and uh, um, is behind all of this, who I, I don't know, um, probably should have found out, but whoever, whoever's behind the, these these choices seems to me, James Eady, to be making the right choices. This was this works really, really nicely. You know, the Linkwood has has the, the character and the richness to sort of stand up to the, uh, the recharge casks. I mean, I think if you'd have put, say, the Glen Elgin in there, or maybe, say, something like Glen Lossy or... Uh, Ogentoshin or something lighter like that, it would have just become a complete oak mess. Um, so something like this, Mortlach maybe, or or another one of those slightly more weightier spirits, just has the guts to, to deal with it. So again, I think a really lovely bottle. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Blair Athol 10 year old, so uh, single recharge hoggy. Um, see what those give us. It's pretty oaky, it's really heavy. There's a lot of almost burnt toffee. Um, it's a bit industrial for. Blair Athol standards actually, I'm quite surprised. It's a bit... It's lacking some elegance, shall we say. It's chunky. It's slightly industrial. It's burnt toffee. Um, it's, yeah, it's kind of not really... It's not really selling itself to me, it has to be said. I'm not, I'm not loving this. I mean, you know, I mean, Blair Athol can be a little bit, it can be a little bit lumpy, it has to be said. I mean, I guess that's part of the reason why, again, they caught, say, oh, it, it works well with uh, uh, with, with sherry uh, casks because it is a traditional style, um, i.e. sort of slightly industrial. And... I mean, some, I mean, sometimes Blair Athol can be really impressive uh, in American oak. Um, but I, I, this this particular bottling, I'm not completely convinced. It has to be said. Let's see what the the parts like. It's a little softer, um, but it's still slightly industrial, slightly hard work. Again, tannic, bitter. Um, I think that I really don't think the recharge casts have kind of worked particularly well with the spirit. Um, I don't think the spirit was particularly well. It wasn't elegant at all, to, to be honest with you, to start off with. Um, and I think sort of using the recharge casks has just kind of like accentuated the. I won't. I won't I wouldn't say false, but it's accentuated its, um, you know, um, somewhat less than um, elegant characteristics, shall we say. Uh, I'm going to put a little drop of water with it, and maybe the magic of a little drop of water will suddenly sort of, like, open it out, and, you know, it will become, uh, you know, floral and, and honeyed and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, uh, Blair Athol can be. Um... And yes, all right, okay. I will say that it has brought out a little bit of a, a little bit of honey, um, and and that sort of burnt sort of caramel note is kind of a little bit um, less obvious now. Um, it's still still some oak, still some still some charred oak, some slightly bitter tannins, um, a little bit of hay possibly now. Um, 
again, it's it, 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 it lacks elegance, it has to be said. It's, it's probably, water has certainly done it some favours on the nose. Let's see what it does on the palate. It's definitely improved with a drop of water. It's certainly brought out some granulated sugar, some honey, a little bit of sweetness to sort of just kind of offset the slight industrial character of the spirit. Um, it's a little confected on the aftertaste, possibly. Um, all told, I, I really just don't feel like this has worked at all. I don't think it was the greatest cask of Blair Rathold to start off with, and I think sticking it into um, into a recharge uh, uh, cask is just sort of like, again, like I said, I just don't think it's done it any favours whatsoever. Personally, I, I wouldn't have bottled that, but then, you know, that's me. I'm probably a little bit sort of, you know, overcritical, but that's, uh, I guess that's why, that's why you trust my judgement, I guess, at the end of the day. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Strath Mill. Let's see what that's good us on this end, shall we? I think you know what I'm going to say. Um, I mean, Strath Mill's a beautiful malt. It's orangey, it's aromatic, it is gorgeous, uh, it's elegant. And then you stick it in a first fill Oloroso butt, and, well, it it's just Oloroso. It's just sherry. I mean, okay. Plus points, no sulphur, very clean. Um, you know, good good cask has to be said. Um, but that's that's what it all is. I mean, I can, you can smell a bit of spirit, but I mean, it's all sherry. And you, you know, um, like I said, I don't mean to sort of like denigrate these kind of bottlings because I know there's a lot of you guys that love sherry monsters. But at the end of the day, it's like it's sherry. Um, there's burnt toffee, coffee, herbal oloroso, etc, etc, etc. It's actually pretty toasty in actual fact. I'm getting a lot of almost kind of sort of um, toasty French oak. Um, it's herbally and I mean, you know, OK, so it's, it, it's interesting from a wood point of view, I suppose. Um, but, you know, it's... It's the polar opposite of the uh, of the, the Glen Elgin. The Glen Elgin was telling me about the the, the, the you know the, the, the distillery character, the, you know the, how it was made. This just tells me that it was finished in a you know a really good quality uh, sherry cask. Yeah, uh, and you know anyway, let's see what passes on. A little bit bitter on the finish, but toasty cherry cask. Yeah, it's all sherry, dried fruit, you know, herbal, oloroso. Um, again, pretty clean, a little bitter, like I said. But you know, uh, again, if you if you like that kind of kind of whiskey, then you're going to sort of absolutely love it. And they did a um, what was the other one? Uh, a tea and inish, uh, exactly the same. Um, Finished for about uh, I think what seven months in uh, in first fill Oloroso and it's exactly the same. It's probably identical. It's like tea and each again lovely. Uh, well, well, maybe not quite so lovely as Strath Mill. It has to be said, but interesting, light, grassy, elegant, classic spay um, at its best. Um, and you shove it into first fill Oloroso and you well you, you pretty much know exactly what you're going to get. Um, you're just going to get all sherry and uh, no trousers and. No change. Don't you know? Water has made absolutely no difference at all to the nose. Um, and likewise to the pat. It's a bit softer now. It's less bitter, um, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the uh, Kalila, the small batch Kalila. So eight years old, uh, bottle of 46% and 
what am I retailing this for? Um, hmm, I think it's about 41 quid, 41.95, something of that kind of ilk. So again, you know, cheap, well, so cheap, um, inexpensive cool dealer. Um, and uh, let's see what those give us then, shall we? Spot on, classic Kalila. It's it's quite meaty for a Kalila, it has to be said. Um, savoury, it's almost in that sort of kind of leche sort of style, but without the sort of like the nasty bits, if you <laughs> if you like. Um, um, quite medicinal, quite peaty. Um, but again, as Kalila can be quite fruity, apricot, white fruit beneath all of that, um, all of that peat is a little grassiness, a little, little pineapple. Um, again, I mean that is just a textbook Kalila, really lovely, lots of distillery character um, and in a long line of, um, you know, bottlings that uh, James Eady have done of Kalila, it's just just really good, you know. Um, so what that's like. Full, oily, quite rich, modern Kalila. Um, nice weight of fruit, good amount of pea. Um, Slightly grassy, little herbal notes, um, good length, um, good finish, uh, what's not to, not to like, you know, I mean, unless you don't like peated malts, then you're never going to like it, but um, it's quite peated by Kalila standards, you know, it's got, got a, uh, I would guess, it's probably somewhere in the 40s uh, parts per million, 40 to 50, so, you know, it is quite heavily peated. Um, by, like I said, by Kalila standards, uh, good length, nice freshness, yeah, it's uh, enjoyable whiskey, really nice. And finally we're on to the Palo Cotado finished uh, Kalila, let's see what those gives on this end, shall we? Again, balanced, really nicely balanced, um, we get plenty of the Kalila character, um, it's briny, it's herbal, slightly medicinal. It's got some rich, some pleasant, rich Kalila fruit. And in the background, in the background, uh, is the whiny, um, grapey, palacatado dried fruit. I mean, this is just absolutely spot on. This is how to use sherry casks. It's A, don't use first fill sherry casks, B, short short finish you know it's kind of like you know this is it's balanced you know and and i go on and on and on about balance in whiskey whether it's you know uh, american oak whiskey sherries or whatever cast that's it's what you want i mean i don't dislike sherry i don't dislike finishing in wine casks all that kind of stuff but it's all about keeping things in perspective and not allowing one element to overpower the other elements and there's a little bit of sultana, a bit of vanilla, some toffee, but again, it's just absolutely spot on balanced. It's about, I can't remember what, what, what my retailing for this for, 60 something, 69, I think it is. A bit expensive, I guess, you know, for uh, an 11 year old. Um, but you know what, I'm, I'm more than happy to sell you this. I think this is absolutely spot on. Let's see what parts like. salty cool um it's kind of sucked all the moisture out of my mouth it has to be said um <coughs> oh, excuse me um so it kind of kicks off with a little bit more of the sherry it's more noticeable with the sort of the, the, the grapey whininess the peat then sort of follows sort of really salty on the mid palate um touch of green olives um a little bit of menthol uh slightly herbal a great length, good length, even at this ABV, um, 
a little tingle on the tongue, <laughs> right on the finish, you know, just to sort of say, mm, this is a car strength bottling. Um, but again, absolutely gorgeous, really nicely balanced, you know, harmonious. Uh, you know, what more can you ask for? Um, okay, the water has made the nose a little bit more oakier, uh, getting a little bit more of the sherry character. Um, it's, it's, it's slightly more nuttier, possibly. Um, the peat is, is slightly sort of dropped off a little bit, as it often can do. Um, but it's still got some weight, still got some lovely fruit, you know. That's what it passes like. Again, palette is slightly more oaky. Um, I mean, that's unusual, but I mean, unusual for Kalila. I mean, well, I mean, it's been finished in, in Palo Vitado, so it's going to have a bit more oak character. I mean, more often than not, Kalila doesn't tend to have an awful lot of oak character. I mean, it's main, because it's blending, uh, well, not blending fodder, but, it, you know, considering most of it goes into the blends, so blenders don't want too much oak. They want, they want the fresh, salty, sort of peaty character. Um, you don't want too much oak character. If you want oak in your blend, then you'll use something else that gives you that. But um, anyway, I'm rambling. And coming back to this, it's it's a lovely whiskey. It's really balanced, um, and I like that. That's that's a great whiskey. Okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Big thank you to Hugh at uh, James Eady for the samples for today's episode of the show. I don't think anyone from James Eady is going to be ultimately surprised by uh, what I've got to say about uh, these whiskies. Everybody knows what I think about the Sherry Monsters. And, um, but anyway, um, the, the Glen Elgin, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Lovely. Love Glen Elgin. Loads of distillery character. You want to sort of learn what Glen Elgin is all about, buy this bottle of whiskey, absolutely spot on. The Linkwood, again, really nice. A um, little bit heavy on the oak, possibly, but it's a cloud, the cloud. Oh. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, firstly, a big thank you to Hugh James Eady for the samples for today's episode of the show. Appreciate your support. Uh, obviously, you know, it's, you know, it's just nice, uh, and I'm guessing they're probably they're, they're kind of like know exactly what I'm going to say about um, about the sherry <laughs> monsters. Um, but anyway, so um, on to to the oh fuck's sake. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Uh, firstly, a big thank you to Hugh at James Eady for kindly sending me the samples. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, the, the Glen Elgin, absolutely spot on. Lovely Glen Elgin. Loads of distillery character. You want to know what Glen Elgin is, is really like? Buy this bottle of whiskey. It is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Um, the Linkwood. Um, again, I really enjoyed that. A little bit heavier on the oak, yes, I will give you that. But again, balanced Linkwood, having the kind of the personality, the guts, the the um, uh, the weight to stand up to the, the recharge hoggies uh, worked really, really nicely. The Blair Athol, the single cast Blair Athol, yeah, it wasn't the greatest cask of Blair Athol, should we say? Um, it's a little bit industrial, it's a little bit hard going, and. Um, Really, you should have whacked that into a first fill Oloroso, but that's <laughs> prank, frankly. Um, the Strathmill, um, yeah, like I, like I said when I toasted it, it was Strathmill is such a beautiful whiskey. Why, 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 why? Um, anyway, it is what it is at the end of the day. Uh, the small batch color again, uh, another strength of um, James Eady. Um, they've just got some lovely casts of Kohlila. I mean, you know, to, to be bluntly honest with you, you can't really go too far wrong with Kohlila. It is such a consistent whiskey. And um, the, the Paolo Cotado finish, look, look, guys, look, this is what you should be doing. You know, if, if this refill Paolo Cotado, uh, absolutely fantastic, really nice, works, balanced. I'm getting distillery character, I'm getting sherry, unlike the, 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 uh, the Strathmill, you know, which is just all sherry. I mean, it's just 
I know that there are loads of you out there, like I said, that love the Sherry Monsters, but to me, they're just one-dimensional. Um, the the Kalila uh, isn't one-dimensional at all. It's absolutely fantastic. And, you know, so um, I suggest you purchase it. Anyway, uh, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it's been a, <laughs> been a load of fun, it has to be said, as always. So, um yeah, what's left to say is uh, if you fancy any of these whiskies, if they kind of sound like your kind of thing, then drop me an email. Good afternoon and good ramming. <laughs>